All right, let's uh, talk about how to graph and solve inequalities. So let's just review. If we have a is greater than b or a is less than b, these two symbols would be an open circle on the number line. If we have a is greater than or equal to b or a is less than or equal to b, we would have what we call a closed circle on the number line. So let's review what that means. So if we have n is greater than 10, all right, 10 is not part of the solution. So on the graph, put our 0, put our 10, put our negative 10. And since 10 is not part of the solution, we use an open circle. That lets us know that 10 cannot be substituted for n. The statement would be false otherwise. But all of the values for n are greater than 10, so our arrow connected to the circle would have to go to the right because that is where the values that are greater than 10 are. If we have n is less than 10, then it would just be the opposite. Again, 10 is not part of the solution, so we would use an open circle. And in this case, the arrow would go to the left because the numbers that substitute for n are less than 10, and the numbers on the number line less than 10 go to the left. All right, now, for our other inequalities here, if we have n is greater than or equal to 10, 10 is equal to 10. So 10 is part of the solution. as well as numbers greater than 10. So to indicate that on the number line, we would use a closed circle, meaning we color it, shade it all in, and notice that the graph of that is exactly on the number line at the intersection of those two lines. And the numbers that are greater than are to the right, so we need an arrow going to the right. And if we have n is less than or equal to 10, again, 10 is part of the solution, as well as numbers that are less than 10. And so on our number line, We would have our 10, put our negative 10 for balance, and this would be a closed circle on 10, and the arrow would be going to the left, meaning that 10 is part of the solution and all of the numbers that are less than 10. So that would be graphing those different inequalities. Now, let's talk about how to write our inequalities All right, there are always two ways. So we want to get good at doing this both ways. If we have n is greater than 2, well, that is the same as 2 is less than n. If we have negative 3 is greater than or equal to n, that would be the same as n is less than or equal to negative 3. So if you're putting the terms in different order, you also have to flip the sign and keep that next to the term itself. So here the point is next to the 2, so here the point has to be next to the 2. Here the point is next to the n, so down here the point still has to stay next to the n. All right, great job. Now we're going to talk about how to 
solve inequalities. All right, and we're going to solve them just like they are an equation. Okay, we're going to pretend they're an equation and solve using the same process. So if I have n minus 2 is greater than 18, if I ask myself what's the operation I'm subtracting 2, so the inverse, the additive inverse would be to add 2 to both sides. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and n would be greater than 20. And with inequalities, we always graph the solution so that we can show it has multiple answers. In other words, it includes all of the values greater than 20. Since 20 is not part of the solution, it has to be greater than 20. We would use the open circle and the arrow going to the right. So that's example number one. Example number two. Let's go ahead and try a two-step problem. Something like 2n plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 17. So in this equation, I've got two things going on. I'm multiplying by 2. I'm also adding 3. So the inverse, we have to get rid of the 3 first, get rid of the 2 second. So to get rid of the 3, I have to do it's add the inverse, which would be subtracting 3 from both sides. So 2n would be greater than or equal to negative 20. Need my n, all right? And now here I'm multiplying by 2, so I need to divide both sides by 2. So 2n divided by 2, negative 20 divided by 2. Bring my symbol down, and that would be n is greater than or equal to negative 10. And let's draw our graph. So we have our 0, positive 10, negative 10. Because n can equal negative 10, that means it's part of the solution, so this would be a closed circle and can also be greater than negative 10. The numbers greater than 10, negative 10, go to the right, so your arrow would go to the right. All right. So we've been solving inequalities just like equations. Well, there is only one exception to the rule for inequalities. There is one thing we have to do differently, and here it is. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, to solve the inequality, the symbol is reversed. All right, so let's get an example going here to make sense of what that is. All right, so if I have 2n is greater than 8, here I would divide both sides by 2, and n would be greater than 4. If I had negative 2n is greater than 8, I would have to divide both sides by a negative 2, all right? Here you, you should be thinking, oh, I'm dividing by a negative. So that means this sign has to reverse. Instead of greater than, it is now less than. And then we cancel, so n would now be less than negative 4. And on our graph, we would have our 0, our 4, our negative 4, and this would be an open circle on negative 4, and the arrow would be going to the left. So again, what you have to remember, if you're dividing by a negative, 
the sign has to reverse because that will change the direction of the arrow on your graph. So be very careful with that. All right, let's try one more like that just to get a little more practice. Let's say we have negative 7 is greater than 3 minus 2n. So what would we do first? We have to get rid of the 3 here. Since 3 is being added, we are going to subtract 3 from both sides. That's our additive inverse property. Negative 7 minus 3 would be negative 10 is greater than, those cancel, I would be a negative 2n. So now what am I doing to n? I'm multiplying by negative 2, so the inverse would be to divide by negative 2. Uh -uh. Remember, I'm dividing by a negative here. So what happens when I divide by a negative? I have to be sure and reverse the sign. So negative 10 divided by negative 2 would be a positive 5 is less than n. Now, we talked earlier, it's easier to have your variable on the left side and your integer on the right. So if I rewrite this with my integer on the right, my variable on the left, I would also have to reverse the sign. So n would be greater than 5. And to graph that, we would put our 0, our 5, and our negative 5. And n is greater than positive 5, so that would be an open circle on 5, an arrow going to the right. So this problem kind of had two issues. First of all, the variable was on the right, and we divided by a negative. So those were two things you had to watch out for. So when you divided by the negative here, you had to reverse your sign. And there's nothing wrong with leaving this as 5 is less than n. But remember, if we do it this way with the variable on the left, the line on the graph will always go in the same direction as the symbol, as long as the variable is on the left. All right, good job, all. Uh, good luck, and thanks for listening.